Good morning, good afternoon and good evening to all denarians on the go and in the know. Today is December 15th, 2019. Please like subscribe and share to help support our channel. Check out the 12 days of Christmas sale. Use the promo code FEEDENARIAN and receive an additional $10 off the unleashed full version. Get your favorite denarian, the sense of security he or she deserves for Christmas. It is worth its weight in gold. Get your copy today. Time is running out. Stay informed and stay alert. And know that today we are one day closer than yesterday. Before we get started, I would like to let everyone know, due to new YouTube policies, if for some reason this channel gets taken down you can still follow me on both Facebook and Twitter. The links to both platforms are in the description below. I will see you there. I also post articles of interest throughout the day on both those platforms. Some do not make it on here, due to censorship issues. With that out of the way, let's get started. First article of interest for today and I love this one. The Security Council condemns the crimes of the militias of Iraq and the revolutionaries present their candidates to succeed Abdul Mahdi. The Security Council issued a statement condemning the armed militia's continued violent approach against the Iraqis. The Council, in a statement on the evening of Saturday, December 14, 2019, expressed concern about the involvement of armed groups in the killings and kidnappings of demonstrators and activists in Iraq. On the other hand, after continuous discussions for several days in the arenas of demonstrations and sit-ins, the Iraqi revolutionaries announced a list of three names for their nomination to head the government to restore the homeland from Iranian hegemony to succeed the resigned Prime Minister Adel Abdul Mahdi. The list included retired Lieutenant General Abdul Ghani al-Assadi, who fought and defeated terrorism, the impartial judge, Rahim al-Akili, and senior economist Sinan Shabibi. Yes you heard that correctly, Shab's in the house. I always knew we would see the godfather of the monetary reform surface again to finish his work. Wouldn't that be awesome, Dr. Shabibi is Prime Minister. Next article of interest. The current government is able to send the budget to Parliament. Member of Parliamentary Finance Committee Ahmed Hammer revealed, on Sunday, the completion of the draft budget law for 2020 indicating that the government is able to send the budget according to a previous letter from the Secretary-General of the Council of Ministers. Hama said in a statement to information that the draft 2020 budget has been completed by the government and is ready to send it any time to the House of Representatives. He added that the caretaker government is not able to send the budget, but the current government is able to send the budget based on a book before the government's resignation issued by the Secretary General of the Council of Ministers indicating the formation of committees and sending the budget to Parliament. Hama explained that the budget of 2020 is summarized by relying on 162 trillion dinars, with an estimated deficit of 48 trillion dinars, and adopting a price ranging from 50 to 56 dollars per barrel. Next article of interest. Parliamentary Finance. The Council of Ministers formed a committee to study the budget and give it the power to send it to Parliament. The Parliamentary Finance Committee revealed, on Saturday, that the Council of Ministers formed a committee to study the federal budget bill for 2020, while it indicated that the Council granted the committee the authority to send the budget to the House of Representatives. Member of the committee, Siam Alakili said in a statement to information that the cabinet decided to form a government committee headed by the Minister of Finance and the membership of the Minister of Planning and a representative of the Council and the Ministers to study the budget and complete its formulation, pointing out that the Council granted the committee the authority to send the draft budget to the Parliament the government is unable to send it after it turned to do business. She added that the governmental committee will send the federal budget bill for 2020 to Parliament once the study and review are over, noting that the budget will reach Parliament before the end of this month for the purpose of studying and voting on it. Today, Saturday, Al Fatah Deputy Mohammed Sahib Al Jaraji called on the government to send a draft budget for 2020 to the Parliament immediately. Next article of interest. 
legal expert explains whether the government has the right to send the budget to parliament. Legal expert Ali Al Tamimi said, on Sunday, that the government cannot send the budget to parliament at the present time as it is a caretaker government, pointing out that Iraq will rely on the 112 budget and spending will be for the operational budget only until the budget is approved. Al Tamimi said in a statement to the information that the caretaker government cannot legislate laws and it is known that the budget is a law sent by the government to parliament in accordance with the Iraqi constitution, but the government does not have the right to send the budget at the moment as it is caretaker. He added that Iraq will depend on a budget 112 according to the financial management law in article number 13 as happened in previous years, and that such exchange will be for the operating budget only without spending any amounts for the investment budget. He explained that the government and in case of violating the constitution and sending the budget to parliament, this step is subject to appeal before the federal court. He pointed out that the government may send the budget to parliament in case the date of its preparation is old and before it becomes a caretaker, but this matter is open and subject to appeal. Next article of interest. A deputy is likely to pass the election law tomorrow's session. On Sunday. The member of the Building Alliance, Abbas Yaber al Atafi, suggested that the election law be passed in tomorrow's session, stating that the extensive discussions on the law are continuing until the moment the law is completed before it is submitted to a vote. Al Atafi said in a statement to Information that the vast majority of the members of the House of Representatives, with the candidate obtaining the highest votes by 100% in multiple constituencies, he added that the percentage of 100% and the multiplicity of districts is a difference in views, despite the fact that with the candidate obtaining the highest votes, indicating that tomorrow's session will witness the House of Representatives voting on all the disputed paragraphs. And parliamentary sources said earlier today, Sunday, that the legal committee in the House of Representatives is an important meeting to resolve the differences of the parliamentary blocks on the new election law. Next article of interest. Member of Parliamentary Finance, Al-Bashara, Iraq can reciprocate with America over its sanctions. Political analyst Hafez Al-Bashara confirmed on Sunday that Iraq has the possibility to reciprocate with the United States after imposing sanctions on some of the figures, noting that it is possible to stop receiving oil revenues from the American side in addition to some other dealings. Al-Bashar said in a statement to Information, the United States uses the method of sanctions on people as a means of pressure on Iraq to keep it away from Iran and the eastern camp like China, Russia and India, especially since Iraq began during the era of Abdul Mahdi to expand its relations with these parties, and therefore it does not want to Iraq comes out of its grip. He added that, America imposes sanctions on senior individuals in order to force them to change their positions, and keep them away from the Iranian and Asian axis in general, noting that, the country that imposes sanctions on its members, especially if it is a sovereign country, must respond to those measures. He explained that, America imposed sanctions on some individuals through the Treasury Department, in order to target their financial assets stressing that Iraq can respond to sanctions by taking measures of a financial and banking nature, by ending work in American supervision of Iraqi oil revenues from countries, the other and deliver them to Iraq. And the Beshaara family stated that Iraq has the authority to remove its oil revenues from the hands of America and not allow it to interfere in the affairs of the Iraqi central bank, in addition to ending armament agreements and therefore Iraq has the authority to respond to U.S. sanctions. Next article of interest. Washington in sanctions waivers on the Iranian Fordo facility. Today, Sunday, the United States of America in sanctions waivers related to the Fordo nuclear site in Iran, which has so far been partially exempt from U.S. sanctions. U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo said in press statements, the United States will end the exemptions from the sanctions related to the nuclear facility in Fordo as of December 15, 2019. For his part, Director General of the Foreign Ministry's Arms Control and Disarmament Department, Fuzun, 
said that members of the Joint Committee to implement the Comprehensive Plan of Action of the Iranian nuclear program regretted that Washington had resumed sanctions on the Fordo nuclear facility. On November 6, the Iranian Atomic Energy Organization officially announced the start of uranium enrichment at the Fordo facility, as part of Iran's reduction of its obligations in the nuclear agreement. It is noteworthy that the administration of President Donald Trump announced on May 8, 2018 the withdrawal from the nuclear agreement concluded with Iran in July 2015, to return Tehran after exactly one year, describing that period as, strategic patience. Next article of interest. Parliament Presidency meets with the Kurdish blocs to discuss the reform law. An informed source said, today, Sunday that the presidency of the Kurdistan parliament is holding a meeting with the Kurdish blocs to discuss the reform bill. The presidency of the Kurdistan parliament held a meeting with the heads of the Kurdistan Democratic blocs, the National Union, the Change Movement and a number of other blocs to discuss the reform bill. And the Kurdistan Regional Council of Ministers last week sent a draft of the reform law to the Kurdistan parliament, including the views of the Kurdish blocs on the legal draft. Next article of interest. Alatafi explains the mechanism of interrogating and holding accountable some of the ministers in the government of Abdul Mahdi. On Sunday, the member of the Construction Alliance, Abbas Alatafi, clarified the mechanism of interrogating and holding accountable some ministers in Adel Abdel Mahdi's resigned government, stressing that integrity and other oversight bodies will ensure this issue. Alatafi said in a statement to Alma Aluma that the Integrity and Judicial Commission has been entrusted with them with the task of questioning and holding ministers accountable to Adel Abdul Mahdi's resigned government. He added, Parliament can no longer conduct an interrogation process for ministers in the said government, as it is resigned, and therefore interrogation within Parliament should be for an existing government and that, the interrogation files in addition to other data related to contracts and financial and administrative matters were referred to integrity and the judiciary, in order to investigate them and hold ministers and other figures in the resigned government and its predecessors. Like subscribe to be alerted as more articles of interest unfold and be sure to find me on Facebook and Twitter. Take advantage of, the 12 days of Christmas sale, before it's over. Use the promo code FEDENARIAN and receive an additional $10 off the full unleashed version. Lock in your deal today. The link is in the description below. Stay informed and stay alert. Knowledge is power. And know that today we are one day closer than yesterday. Over and out for now. The Denarian.